right, so um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to measure out a kilo of mix. Now, uh, I've got an empty Robin Red tub here, and I know that this empty tub is going to be 250 grams of mix when it's full. So I know that four of these is a kilo. So because I've got more mainline base mix than obviously triple X, it's just an amalgamation of the ingredients that I've had for a while now. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put in half a kilo of mainline base mix. So that's two of those. Then I'm going to put some CC more, obviously triple X. This is the mainline mix is quite isn't really flavoured or anything or have any additives, it's just a fish meal and um, whatever else they put in it, sort of mix. So it's just a standard plain sort of mix. Um, this Odyssey Triple X is just rammed full, absolutely full of GLM, some high quality pre-digested fish meals. So I'm adding the two together so I can basically add the the mainline mix for a while and um, and I wanted to make some more boys but I didn't want to just use the mainline mix I wanted to use something else with it so I'm mixing the two sort of 50-50 split um, now I've, I've put slightly less obviously triple X in I'm going to put roughly half in And then half again of the main line to make it up to the kilo. And this is important, the Robin Red. My Robin Red, can't love it. It's actually 50 grams of that there. So what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to put the main line in. The last of the main line. Then I'm going to put that Robin Red in. All of it. I know there's 50 grams in here because I put 50 grams in every kilo mix. I've made four. There's 250 grams in the bag to start with. Therefore, you know, there must be 50 grams left. So, we've done that. And now I've got another pot, which is nice. I like having pots. I'm just going to add to that a tiny amount of pepper. I say tiny, it's quite a lot really, but it's no, it's not a lot in the size, you know, for the amount of powder that's in there. And some paprika as well, just to give it a little bit of a kick. Then, just to mix it all up, this is going to be awkward because I've used the lid of the bucket to rest my uh, camcorder on. So I use this lid instead. So hang on one second. I just I just put the lid on the bucket. Give it a damn good shake. So as you can see that's all night quite consistently mixed together. There's a few lumps in there. The mainline mix mix is quite lumpy. But that that'll break itself up as I mix it all up and all integrate in together quite nicely. Might even leave it a little swirly effect in the bait, which will look quite nice. Um, so now I'm gonna run you through the liquids. 
Okay, so it's worth noting that you need to keep your liquids and your solids, well, your powder, separate until they're all together. So you're going to mix it all together. So, I'm going to make up a kilo worth of liquids. It's going to comprise of 10 millilitres of banoffee. Ten milliliters of fish oil. Oops. And then fifteen milliliters both of our, of the walnut oil. And the hemp oil. Okay, so now that I've got that, I need to get my eggs in motion. You can see the differences between the liquids and the oils floating on top. So you've got your fish oil and your banoffee, the oil floating on top because it's lighter. So it's obviously quite important that you mix everything in consistently with your eggs and then in turn with your mix. Grab your blender. Let's try and get a better. Nope, that's not very good either. So now I'm going to put my ten eggs into my blender. Now obviously don't use a missus's blender especially not with the oils because they stick to it and it's, it's not easy to get it clean again properly so just go down to the shop and buy yourself one for a tenner save you a lot of uh, you know a lot of earache and a lot of heartache and potentially a divorce. So for a ten well for a kilo's worth of face mix, put in 10 eggs. I put two in with the shells, just so that it gives the bait a bit of consistency, something for the crunch for the carp to, they like, you know, it gives them something to chew on. And then the others, I just put straight in. But, because I'm using 50 millilitres of liquid, I'm actually only going to use 9 eggs because I think that 50 millilitres of liquid will make my 10th egg up. But I tried using less. Um, people say to use 5 per kilo, 6 per kilo, and I really struggled. I really struggled to uh, get the bait to. Uh, you now I apologise for the washing machine in the background. I've got a stag to do tomorrow, so I'm trying to get everything done at the same time. So. Yeah, I, I struggled with the lack of moisture in the mix to uh, roll it and to to pump it out the gun well. You've got to you've got to make sure it's the right consistency to pump out the gun easily. Um, so I'm actually going to use nine eggs because I found that ten works best for for me for what I've been doing. But it all depends on the base which you're using and how well that takes in the moisture you know, the eggs provides. I'm actually going to use eight eggs just to be safe and then if I need another egg then I'll put another egg in I'll just blend it in and just mix it in just to give it that extra moisture but I don't think it's going to need it actually because these are quite big eggs because that's another thing to take into account so I say an X amount of eggs but if your eggs are big or if your eggs are small it's going to be more or less 
So, uh, so now I've put my oil in with that. My flavourings, my liquid flavourings. And now I'm not going to bother showing you the next bit. I'm obviously going to put it through the blender. Okay, so I wish my uh, my mix, as you can see, nicely mixed up. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a well in the middle of my mixture. I'm going to take the lid off this. Right, so now I'm slowly going to add a bit of mixture to it. So I'm going to roll that into my into my, um, you know, into my mix. Roll the, the egg and the flavourings in. Just put a bit in. I'm try and break up some of these big lumps. Obviously, I would spend more time preparing this normally, but A, it's an evening and I haven't got a lot of time, and B, I'm just going to show how to make it. And like I said before, if it, you know, if it's got the lumps in it, as long as they absorb the liquid properly, which they're going to when we leave it sit for a little while, then um, it might actually give it a nice little marble effect to the bake. <clears throat> so as you can see, it's starting to take in the moisture now a little bit. It's starting to all bind together. The key is to get it to bind fully. I will, uh, I will show you the finished product in a minute. Cause I'm sure you don't want to watch me mixing liquids into powder for well the next sort of like five minutes. So I've mixed my paste up. It's now consistent all the way through, and that's nice and squidgy. That's going to pump out of a gum fairly easily but it's firm enough to stay in one piece. It's not sticking to my hands or anything. It's also very important. You don't want it too sloppy. So uh, I was right in saying that I only needed eight eggs because they were quite big eggs. So I'm gonna leave that now for a little while just to absorb the oils and then I'm gonna start loading it into the gun and rolling it. Okay, so the next thing I do is I load my gun. Now I've got a Deluxe Gardener Bake Gun. You take the end off. Take a bit of your paste. Roll it into a sausage. Stick it in the end. And uh, and put the lid on. It really is. That easy. Obviously, if you push that button down, you can push a lot of it down, and then you want to pump that out into sausages. Now that's coming out nice and easy, so I know it's going to probably come out of sausages quite nicely. Okay, so I've rolled my sausages, and then it's just literally a case of popping the lid down. Giving it a good roll. Now some people obviously make sure that everything's rolled fine, but I just give them a very brief roll. Some of them turn out round, some of them don't, but it doesn't really bother me because I like the fact that there's a lot of variation in the shape. A lot of them kind of turn into this sort of like dumbbelly sort of shape, which isn't quite a full round boilie. And then you just add them to your little pot. This is the bit that takes the work. But like I say, like some of them, I haven't even hardly. You know, I just get these, pinch off the ends, and then pop them in. I just, I, I just think that it's much better to have a good variation of different types of bait. The only reason that boilies are normally round is 
just because they're easier to manufacture that way in a mass you know way and uh, obviously you can put them for a throwing stick but I generally use a catapult or a spod so I don't really need to worry about any of that okay so pumping it through the gun was the hard bit it doesn't take too long to do and as you can see I've pumped all my baits out there's a number of different sort of sizes and consistencies there's bits of ends of the gun all sorts of things just you know I, I like to have lots of different shapes there um, and then what was left of the gun I took out the last sort of like three inches and that's just paste and I'm just going to freeze that up and I'm going to um, can use it to wrap around hook baits as extra attraction. Could use it as bait, sort of. You know, I'm going to be fishing the river fairly soon, so I can actually just mould it around a, uh, you know, around a hair rig, with a small pellet or something. Use it as a pace hook bait. Um, there's some little bits left over. I'm going to put them into my uh, into my pigeon conditioner mix, which I'm going to show you how to make in the next video. Um, now the first thing you've got to do is you've got to literally get your water boiling. This bit, this is a bit that takes the time. So I'm going to put the lid on so that it heats up quicker. I'm also going to put the fan on so it extracts any extra condensation so the kitchen doesn't go steaming up. Now when I boil the baits, I boil them for 90 seconds. So. get a stopwatch, I use the one on my phone um, I can't remember what it's called because I'm not using it in a little while uh, stopwatch pro plus I use I go to countdown I go for one minute and 30 seconds Now as you can see that there is boiling well. It's safe to say that that is boiling. So you put some baits in. Generally go a couple of handfuls at a time. You'll find that when you put the baits in it cools the water down so you've got to keep re-boiling it. This is going to be a bit awkward because I'm doing it with holding the camera, then time it. So there we go, it's counting down a minute and 30 seconds. I was just giving them a little shake every now and then just to make sure that they don't stick together, which they shouldn't do anyway, but just keep them boiling over. Put the lid back on. And wait for a minute and 30 seconds. Once your uh, time has gone off, take them out, give them a bit of a shake just to get rid of any surface water, and then put them into something to let them start to air dry and cool. And then obviously repeat the process until you've done all your baits. So obviously I'm going to reset that. Load more baits. Minute and a half done. So I'm going to do that and then I'll show you the finished result. So I boiled all my bait. You can see the steam coming off the last of it now. I'm going to put the paste in the freezer so it doesn't go off. I'm going to spread these out onto two boards and leave them to air dry for around 24 hours. I put them onto a couple more like you know drainy boardy things because it will you know it means that the boilies aren't sat on top of each other and it means that they can all air dry consistently. Um, 
and then I put them in an air drying bag and I chuck them in the freezer. And that is how you make nuts about banana boilies. Um, but they're with the added hemp oil now, so I'm contemplating calling them nuts about a blazed banana. So uh, it's quite a long name, but <laughs> it's a bit of fun, isn't it? Um, I hope you guys have enjoyed watching the show, and um, if you enjoyed, uh, you know, like and subscribe. If you'd like to share your boily recipes, or you'd like me to have a go at making your boily recipe, then put it in the description below and I'll have a go. And, uh, and we'll see what we can cook up. Until next time. And this is the, uh, the final product. A nice dark red, browny bread colour which uh, when you break it up you can see all the oils in the inside of it and the flavourings. Hopefully I'll catch some fish on it in the next few videos.